This is Papa Chubby with The Good Doctor. I got into the blues pretty much through classic rock, through, you know, people like, um, you know, I grew, I, I grew up in the 70s when people like Johnny Winter and Led Zeppelin and, and um, the Allman Brothers and, you know, a lot of that stuff was happening. And uh, I always used to see Willie Dixon's name on uh, records and I used to wonder, man, who's Willie Dixon? I started hanging out with older cats who hit me to who Willie Dixon was and who Freddie King was and who Albert King was and B.B. and stuff like that. And... Um, you know, being a guitar player, I realized that that was really the roots of all the music I was listening to. Um, so that, those were my, my influences, you know, early on, but I was influenced by a lot of different music, man. And, you know, being from New York, you, you get hit with a lot of stuff because that's, that was the beauty of New York. I don't know if it's that way anymore, but it used to be that New York was like really rich in a lot of different kinds of music and any musical scenes that happened here kind of like had a lot of stuff in them, you know? So I was lucky enough to like, you know, be part of like the early 80s, late 70s punk scene, you know, like CBGBs and like that kind of scene. And then like um, the hardcore scene when that started happening. And then when the blues scene started happening in like the late 80s, early 90s, I was like part of that, you know? So it was like, there were, there were always like really good musical scenes happening in New York, you know? Yeah, we used to have shows at the Fillmore where they'd have like Miles Davis and the Stooges on the same bill, you know? They, you know, there'd be bills like, I mean, this was actually after my time. I remember hearing about shows like this. I caught the tail end of it, you know, there'd be like shows at the Warman Rink in the 70s and stuff where you, it'd be like, you know, um, Marshall Tucker Band and Mahavishnu Orchestra, you know, stuff like that, man. It, like music was wide open. It, it, it really, it wasn't about genre so much as it was about good music. And, and um, unfortunately, nowadays, nowadays it's way more about marketing for the mainstream, which is kind of sad because music gets totally pushed aside. That's why something like this is so cool, you know? Part of the problem too is, and I have to say this in defense of um, the listener, man, is like listeners aren't, aren't stupid. That's the thing. People know what they want to hear and they know when they're hearing something good. And the problem with a lot of new blues records is that everybody thinks they're going to cross over, you know? They, and instead of writing good blues, they write bad rock, you know? And it's like, it ain't about that. It's, a, it's about a genuine, like if the blues is about anything, it's about a moment in time. It's about a genuine expression. Right. You know, and um, and that's what I like in all the records I do and all the records I produce. That's really the focus of what I try to do. Like I've tried to model my whole thing after like Willie Dixon and like that kind of in-house thing where like, you know, there's like a vibe going on, you know. And um, th those are the kind of records we're making with, with like my own label and for the labels I produce for and stuff like that. Well, it was it was kind of interesting, man. Kind of all fell into my pocket. Um, before that, I had been playing as a sideman in a lot of like rock bands, a lot of like told you punk bands. In in the, like early eighties, I played with Richard Hell and the Voidoids, and yeah. And then I played with an Irish artist named Pierce Turner, who was on RCA. Did three records with him. Philip Glass produced one of them. So I had this like background. I knew it was what it was like to play a lot of different music, but I wasn't fulfilled. And I'd go hang out in like little blues bars like Dan Lynch down on 2nd Avenue or like, you know, places like that and just be like, yeah, man, you know, I want to just jam. I just want to play for three hours a night. I want to play the guitar for three hours a night. That's how you get good. You play all night long, you know. So that's what I started doing, man. And I've always been a songwriter, so I just started writing songs. And uh, around that time, I fell into this scene with some cats from like an older scene who were like in a bands like, uh, I don't know if you remember the shirts or like uh, the Laughing Dogs. These guys had a studio over in uh, the West Bet building in West Village. So I started hanging out at their studio. They gave up the studio and I kind of took it over. So um, all of a sudden I had a recording studio and I had these songs. So I started making recordings and I started thinking, man, can I make a record? Can I, you know, I didn't know how to make a record, you know? This was like 1990. And um, so I made this record right here. Uh, it's Chubby Time. And um, around that time, I got the house gig up at a blues club on Upper East Side called Manny's Car Wash, which was, it was interesting, man, for what it was. You know, it was like in, in the Upper East Side. So like, you know, how down could that be? But at the same time, it was like definitely the blues scene in New York was was focused around that club. Well, if you were kind of in the loop, it wasn't a surprise because it was it was like going downhill for a while and then it was just like all the other clubs in New York, real estate, man. They just got pushed out. 
Now it's a Popeye's fried chicken. Well, another interesting story just like that is that um down in the in the East Village, man, there was this club called 171 Avenue A that like the Bad Brains, the Beastie Boys all got their start in. They closed that place down and it sat vacant for 19 years. They closed it down and it just sat vacant. They just opened like a sushi bar there or something. So it's like, you know, it just goes to show. Like these things, like you don't value these scenes when they're happening until after they're gone, you know? And it's like, that's the thing. Like when musical scenes happen, they kind of like pop up and then they happen, but they ain't around for long. 